Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to the meeting of the IGB. I'm sorry, we're getting a bit of feedback on that. Um, uh, so not all the technology is um, working as perfectly as it should this morning, but um, uh, we'll we'll see how we go. Um, uh, before I forget, this is Kim Cruttenden's uh, last meeting. We'd like to thank Kim for uh, all her work for the IGB. I think since 2018, is that right, Kim? It's been a few years anyway, but you've made a great contribution, so thank you, and we will miss you. So thank you for that. Um, I will now hand over to Emma to do the housekeeping. Um, uh, those of you who are remote, um, Emma will try and spot if you've got your hand up, because I'm sure I'll miss if you've got your hand up. Um, uh, trying to look at various different screens at the same time. Um, so do bear with us if I do miss you, uh, but we'll get there in the end. So over to you, Emma. Thank you, Chair. Good morning and welcome to the meeting of the Integration Joint Board. Today's meeting is a hybrid meeting and we have some people in the Health Village and others participating remotely. The meeting is being recorded and published online after the meeting. Could all attendees leave their camera on, but switch off their microphone when not speaking, but switch on both camera and microphone when you are invited to speak so that this is picked up on the recording. If you wish to speak, please use the raise your hand function or indicate in the meeting chat and I will alert the chair. I will now do a roll call and would ask that members confirm their attendance when their name is called so that this is clear in the recording and can also be recorded in the minute. Chair. Good morning. Vice Chair. Yeah, good morning. Councillor Allard. Present. Student Brown. Kim Crutenden. Present. Councillor Gregg. Councillor Tessera. Present. Emma, can I say that if I can ask Sandra McLeod? Yep. Paul Mitchell? Yep. Stephen Close? Present. Phil Mackey? Yep, I'm here. Jenny Gibb? Jim Curry? Present. Graham Simpson? Maggie Hepburn. Present. Shona McFarlane. <laughs> Alison Murray. Present. Alan Chammers. And we have apologies from Christine Hemming, Judith McLennan and Caroline Howarth. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank, thank you, Emma. Um, do we have any transparency statements or declarations of interest? Not seeing any hands, so I'll take that as a no. Um, uh, we don't have any exempt business today. Uh, and in terms of the running order, uh, colleagues from Bonacord Care um, are due to be somewhere else at 12 o'clock. So what I'm proposing to do is to take the Bonacord Care item as the first substantive item on the agenda. Um, once we've just seen the very brief video, which I will hand over to Emma to get us launched with. Hi, my name's Graham. So I moved away from Aberdeen for a few good years and, uh, and then I found myself coming back to the city. So for
when I came back home, I was very lucky in the situation that uh, I had a chance to have a bit of spare time. And then I just thought, we'd like to do some volunteering, which I've never done, you know, and it's just so satisfying. And, uh, and just that feeling of wanting to give and help people that are needing help. And I just think it's a, I think it's a nice thing to do. You know, even when I came down initially to the warehouse to have a little look before I even put my hand up for it, uh, it had just it felt something I fancy doing. And it's it's actually, even now, it's not quite a year yet. I've been here July last year. And uh, it's actually better than what I actually thought it would be. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a positive thing in meeting the team that works here. And I think it's, that's the, the main thing. You work as a team. Uh, we're all reaching for that goal just to help people out. Well, if you have got a bit of time, we would love to see you. When it comes to volunteering, there's so many different things you can do. You don't have to be in the warehouse. You can find your little niche that you like doing. But then at the same time, you can float around, do, do different jobs all around it. Uh, the, with the Serenians and that's what they, you know, they'll, they'll open up their arms and take you in and, and we'll have a good bit of fun as well at the same time. You have a good laugh with the, the people that's here. So if you have got a bit of time, do it. It's, it's a fantastic thing to do, definitely. Um, yeah, my name is Dave McLaughlin and um, I've been volunteering since 2014. It's been fantastic. I really enjoy it. I mean, I, I used to work in an, a, an IT service company and this has been totally different, completely different from that. Um, I, I drive and I go collect deliveries, deliver food and so on. In Aberdeen, um, I think it's well known to be you know, quite a prosperous city with the oil industry and everything, but there's a lot of poverty and especially now with the cost of living and so on. You know, working for Serenians now or volunteering, uh, you know, you really see what goes on and, and I go to places that I wouldn't have normally been to before and you can see the, the benefits that Serenians brings to everyone and the people that, that use the services really um, benefit from it. I continue to do it because I've enjoyed it but also you, you feel you're helping in some way directly. It gives you um, a good sense of purpose as well. I'm Julie um, I've been volunteering for probably about five years and it was my daughter that suggested Cyrenians. She had done a corporate day here with her job and said oh they're always looking for volunteers. We have a core of clothes that are needed by service users. Aberdonians are extremely generous people and the clothing that they put in or well, some of it is you know, brand new with tags on it. I had a request a few weeks back, a, a gentleman was going to a funeral, he needed a suit, shirt, tie, shoes, and we got the whole thing for him, everything was here, brand new suit, a new shirt, so he was well kitted out. I mean, I find myself sort of stuck at home really after I stopped working, most of my friends were still working, or they maybe didn't stay in Aberdeen, and I, I was beginning to really get a bit anxious. Coming here has given me, I don't know, a new lease of life, I suppose. <laughs> um, but it's good to know that you're doing something to help others. And and Cyrenians make us feel very welcome as volunteers and, and make sure that we know that we're doing a job to help others, that we're doing a good job. I'm Graham and I been volunteering at the Cyrenians for um, two or three years now um, and it, often I work here doing the clothes we get lots of donations for um, clothing I wanted to do something for my own local community with some of my spare time and I wanted to just like meet some different people made quite a few friends and and that's that's part of a reason to do it as well it's that sort of social aspect of meeting different people and things so depending on what you want out of it and um, give as much time or as little time as you've got like i just do this one morning a week because i'm still working so it can be whatever you want and you're doing something for people in your own own community Cyrenians as an organization provides a much needed um service to the community when i first came for an induction day um, I was told that every single one of us is like three or four pay slips away from homelessness. And it really hit home with me 
having an organisation that you can go along to, you can get advice on benefits or form filling or housing or whatever. It, it's, it's essential. It's absolutely essential. I just think, well, especially in this day and age, it's more important now than ever. I mean, we shouldn't, we shouldn't really have to be doing this, but I think we have to do it more than we ever did. Like in the last three, four years, it means more than ever what everybody's went through around the world, let alone here. It's quite emotional, as you can see. So Aberdeen people are just fantastic. And, and as I say, in this day and age, you wouldn't believe that how generous people are. It's just a wonderful thing to see. It fills you with positivity. Uh, now Aberdeen people are just, they dig deep and they always turn up good, you know. And I'm proud of that, which is good stuff, you know. So thanks for that, Emma. I um, uh, hope everybody enjoyed the video. Um, we like to uh, play these at the start of the meetings <clears throat> just to get us in the right frame of mind. Um, and we thought that one was particularly uh, apt because, um, as it said, this is uh, Volunteers Week. Uh, so the volunteers provide a vital service to the service users um but also volunteering in it is itself something that i think enriches their lives so um as i say we're just really keen to uh, to show that one um june brown i think has a declaration of interest um and is gonna have to withdraw from item 6.1 um i don't know whether you want to do you want to add anything june or are you happy with that um, thank you, John. I'm happy with that. Um, obviously, I sit here with a different hat on, a professional hat that I've had to give advice on it previously, so I feel it would be inappropriate to, to be part of it. So happy to withdraw. Thank you. OK, thanks for that. And now we'll take the first substantive item, which is the item on Bon Accord Care, item 5.1. So who is introducing this one? Is it Pamela? Yes. Over to you. Not got any sounds. I don't know if anybody else has. No, I've not got any sound either. And from the look of it, that particular mic is switched off. Sorry, Fun. <laughs> we have a few technical problems still with sound. Okay. Okay. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, oh, that's good. OK, um, so um, I've just to uh, say I'm Pamela McKenzie. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the Managing Director at Bon Accord Care um, and I've got Lou Henderson with me today, Head of Delivery and Development for Bon Accord Care. Um, and we're obviously very um, pleased to be here um, to share um, our three year um, strategic plan um, with you. Um, we have um, spent a bit, quite a bit of time um, on that over the last six months um, and we've done a, a series of engagement events with a variety of stakeholders, some who are in the room today, um, along with our uh, service users, our family and our staff um, and other key um, providers in the city as well. Um, not surprisingly, we've used um, the Health and Social Care Partnerships um, three-year plan as um, you know, a really good starting point for discussion um, uh, so that we can support um, and hopefully provide some solutions um, to um, uh, delivering uh, the Health and Social Care Partnership strategic aims as well. Um, so, I mean, it's we've had some great um, debate and um, discussions around this and, and Bon Accord Care's board signed it off at the end of March. Um, so we have got um, four key strategic aims. Um, they're caring, 
healthy lives, enabling independence and workforce. Um, within those strategic aims, um, we have got um, a delivery intent um, through your um, plan. Um, and we've just started, um, well, we've just developed um, year one's priorities and a more in-depth um, strategic delivery plan with ELT sponsors um, and work streams, some of which are underway already um, with the partnership, um, particularly around um, the pathways work that um, Kay is heading up. And we've also been working with um, Shona and Fraser on um, our SLA discussions about what Bon Accord looks like in the future. Um, and um, obviously we've got Rosewell as well, which is, you know, been um, a work in progress um, and we continue to work on that as we as we both um, both parties move through their strategic um, plans. So um, we're so we've done the delivery um, plan for year one and we're about to share that with our board tomorrow um, through our governance um, process. Um, and then we're also looking at kind of structure that's fit for purpose in terms of get, um, us having the right skills, knowledge in the organisation in order to journey through this next three years. Um, so, and Lou, I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit um, um, in, a, a, in a moment. So I'm not going to say too much more than that because um, I think the plan speaks for itself, but I'm really happy to take any questions that anybody um, would like to, to pose. Thanks for that, Pamela. And uh, what I should have said at the beginning, but forgot to, is whenever someone someone is coming in to speak, could you just introduce yourself in terms of name and what your role is here? Um, so, any questions for Pamela? <laughs> I saw Martin Gregg first, yeah. and then Luan's hand. So, Martin, over to you. Uh, Martin Gregg, I'm a member of the IGB. Um, yeah, it's a really well structured strategy, and I just wanted to ask a specific question about the role of digital within that within that plan for the next three years. And there's mention of technology enabled here, mm. and I wondered if that was a special focus at all. Um, there's a there are many kind of developments in electronic delivery, like communication processes, and so forth. Um, I understand mm. that um, use of digital platforms can ease some of the pressures that you find on um, that are coming through from workforce issues. So I just wondered if is there, is there more detail on digital and on ele electronic um, uses? Yes, um, thanks very much. Thanks, uh, Greg. Yes, um, there absolutely is, and um, we um, are we have within the plan a uh, technology enabled care, and we're going to be building on what we already have in place. Um, and you're absolutely right. I think it's going to, you know, be more um, prevalent as we move forward. Um, we've just actually um, been awarded and accredited um, the qualification framework for technology enabled care just last week. So for the second year running. Um, so so it's really something that we're very passionate about. And we realise that there's, you know, it's a big market out there in which to um, explore possibilities. We've obviously got the analogue to digital um, switch over of which we're very uh, closely linked. Um, so there's work streams that are that are coming out of that. Um, and um, so we're working with colleagues um, in the room and um, elsewhere as well on on that um, programme also. So um, and we're also working with Aberdeen City Council um, on the Dynamic 365 as well and looking at opportunities um, through that as well to have access to live uh, data um, as well. So, yeah. Um, on, on the subject of D365, um, are, you're linking up with that quite seamlessly are you I understand that it's a it's quite a quite a, uh, quite a revolutionary innovation um, for particularly social care yeah. um, activities and I think that the, I believe that there are considerable advantages from using the D3, D3 <coughs> information sharing data data sharing potential there so there's good opportunity to think. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of joined up working as well, joined up working, and it's it's important that that is seamless. So we're exploring the opportunities around that as well. Thanks for that. I think um, uh, Laura, next. 
Thank you. Thanks, Pamela. Really welcome having this uh, strategy here and, and I can see how aligned it is with the Health and Social Care Partnership, particularly around prevention and early intervention, which is great. Two, two questions. One, how are you aiming to measure progress around, around particularly around prevention and early intervention? And secondly, how are you taking service user experience and staff views into the ongoing development of the of the delivery plan? Yeah. Um, so I'll answer the first point. Um, what we're what we're doing currently is reviewing our SLA in its entirety and the KPIs around that as well, Luan. So we are looking to look at what is important to measure and particularly against sort of prevention and sort of intervention, we're looking at length of um, length of intervention and that stepping down of care and capturing that data as well as part of our KPIs. Um, and so and we're we're presenting that back to um, the partnership as well. We're working closely with Fraser and colleagues on kind of what those measurables look like um, and how we can demonstrate the value that these intermediate and preventive to services and um, provide as well. So we'll have measures within our SLA that will be able to demonstrate that. And um, we're developing a dashboard approach to it as well, so that it's very visible to um, all organisations, um, hoping to get some live data as well. So we're working really closely on, on getting that and, and being able to see it in real time also. So um, hopefully we'll be able to show um, a positive trend in, in the things that we're, we're aiming to do. We will have progress against our delivery plan as well that will be monitored as well at every exec meeting and also at our, um, our boards and our subcommittees as well, particularly our clinical um, governance committee. And you had a second point, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, it was about the um, involvement. Um, yeah. I'll maybe hand over to Lou to um, talk about that because Lou's been um, involved very heavily in, in that. Yeah. Thank you, Pamela. So I'm Lou Henderson, Head of Delivery and Development at, at Bonker Care. So, uh, good morning to them. Um, so for, from a, an engagement perspective uh, for our strategy, we're looking to have a pause and reflect sessions on an annual basis and, and potentially even a six monthly basis where we're connecting in with um, the service users, their families, other provider organisations or partnership um, organisations that we work with very closely to, to review progress, um, not only on of delivery, but in relation to whether or not we need to change direction and um, understanding that the landscape of, of uh, health and social care really is a, a movable feast. And, and to that effect, we want to be able to, to, to offer that level of flexibility in and around our, our strategic delivery uh, as well. So um, we have regular um, service user engagement groups that are currently being set up. We have a few at the moment, but the plan is that that, that, that model will be rolled out across all of our services within Bonnet for Care and even in traditional services where there may not have been opportunities to link in with service users. So I'm thinking around um, our, our provisions at the, the joint equipment store, which um, the, their contact with, with service users tends to be on a, a very short term basis for, for delivering equipment and such like. But we're very keen to hear um, our service users' voices in, in those sort of underrepresented services as well. Yeah. I think in addition to that, we've um, when we were um, putting the plan together, we tapped into the local empowerment groups as well, the community groups. Um, so we're not just our own service users, but community, um, you know, people in the community within the city of Aberdeen as well. So we're utilising kind of a variety of resources. Within year one of our plan as well, we're going to have a more robust um, participation strategy as well that um, our head of clinical services is drawing up as well. Um, so that'd be something we'd be really happy to share with you as well. Um, and we'll be working very closely with you all on that as well. Thank you, it's really good to hear, thank you. Thanks for that. Have we got any, any further questions? I'm not seeing any hands. In which case, can we just uh, agree the recommendation, which is uh, to note uh, note the paper and to thank uh, colleagues from On Accord Care, um, Pam and Lou for uh, coming and presenting it to us. So, thanks a lot.
Thanks very much. Thanks for Thank the you. opportunity. Thank That's you. great. Which now brings us back to the, the original running order. Um, so the first item, or rather the next item, I should say, uh, is 4.2, which is the minutes of the, the budget meeting uh, held on the 28th of March. Um, which I'm just trying to find. And uh, do we uh, can we agree the minutes as a as a true record? Um, anyone got any matters arising? Not seeing any. Thank you very much. Uh, that brings us on to the minutes of the board meeting of the twenty fifth of April this year. And again, can we uh, agree that as a correct record? Thank you. Um, any any matters arising? Not spotting any. That then takes us to item 4.4, which is the, the minutes of the uh, Risk Audit Performance Systems Committee on the 2nd of, uh, 2nd of May. Um, Martin, as chair, is there anything you particularly want to draw our attention to or? Uh, Mm-hmm. So can we uh, can we agree the minute? And um, have we got any matters arising that anyone wants to raise? Not seeing any hands. Which brings us on to the business planner four point five, um, which I think is relatively straightforward. I don't know, Fraser, is there anything you particularly wanted to draw attention to? Thanks, uh, John. Just You'll see there's just the one item um, that's been deferred from today to the next meeting. Um, that's just to give our colleagues um, at NHS Grampian just a little bit more time to reflect on some of the good work that um, Jess has done to date, um, just providing a bit of clarity around um, the primary care improvement plan. So confident that that will be at the next meeting. Thank you. For that, um, uh, yeah, and um, uh, certainly having seen what's been going on in the background, I know there's no blame attached to the fact that it's it is deferred, as you say. It is just a case of uh, letting colleagues at NHSG just reflect on what we've got so far. So thanks for thanks for that. I'm not seeing anybody else with any other questions on the business planner. Nope. Uh, which then takes us to the seminar planner. Um, obviously got a couple of seminars uh, coming up or a seminar coming up this afternoon. Do we have any comments or questions on this one? Martin? Yeah, um, yeah I'm, I'm really pleased to see um, so many seminars. even if it's just to hold that date um, for the future. So there's a couple that I you know, are really particularly interested in. Um, that's just a thought, just so that we're, um, just so that our, our, our diaries are clear for, for them. I think that's a very good point. So we have probably, if we can organise to get the seminar dates out, I think we can get them um, electronically. Uh, any more questions on the seminar plan? Not seeing any questions. In which case that will bring us on to item 4.7, which is the chief officer's report. To Sandra, if you want to introduce this one. Can, can everyone hear me on the screen? OK, yeah, that's fine. And you can hear me in the room. So um, thank you very much, Chair. So the report um, in front of you highlights the breadth of work really that's been undertaken to deliver on the IGB strategic plan. 
It highlights development and opportunities that we have working with partners to improve our outcomes, such as the complex care. There's an update there, there's an update on the vaccination centre, about how we're moving that and also how we're looking to bring in a real um, health improvement, health um, yeah, health improvement agenda. Also, um, the delivery of the healthy house and staff wellbeing, again, broader aims that help for our delivery plan. What you will also find in the local updates is we're also mindful of areas that continue to feel the pressure of demand and capacity. So we have their wider macro influences such as um, that are impacting us through primary care. And I think that's a well documented area that we have with our GP colleagues, with our primary care colleagues and how we're working to support them. We've had closure of a care home recently, which was not down to the care home, but actually from wider influences from the landlord, and that's been well managed um, and supported by the staff teams. At a regional level, the report really highlights the work um, that we're doing with the community planning partnership. We're really well integrated into that and have a significant part to play in the LOIP, which is well aligned with our strategy, as well as the NHS plan for the future. Um, I, I feel that as a partnership, we're really good partners, but we're always seeking to see how we can consider further collaboration so we can bring much more of a positive impact for our citizens. On a national level, we're working to shape um, and share our positive culture and partnership working with colleagues at a national level with the intent to maintain our dialogue and hopefully shape and influence any future NCS. So it's really quite a, a, a in-depth report, but a wide range of subjects. So really hope that people have found that informative and happy to take any questions. Thanks, Sandra. And yeah, that's um, uh, just looking at the report. It, it strikes you, it strikes me anyway, um, what an awful lot of stuff we've got going on at the moment. So um, uh, as ever, the uh, report is, is very, very useful. Does anyone have any questions on the report? Martin? Um, can you close the, the sounding board? Um, we had a we previously had a, a presentation and, and, a, and, a, and a meeting on the on developing the IGB culture, and I just wondered will there be a further opportunity at some point for us to? I I, I don't know if it's a if it's a whole board activity. Um, just sort of what happens next. Certainly, I'm hope. I'm not sure if we've got Jason on the call or Luan. If you're keen to use your to pick that up, yeah, happy to do that. We have the culture sounding board. We've got dates in the diary for that every couple of months for the next yeah. six months, and and that's open for anyone to right. attend. So we can share those dates with you, Martin, and mm -hmm. we'd be delighted to, to have you come along. And also to say that the the work we're doing with Aberdeen University. Uh, we'll be reaching out to all our IGB colleagues to ask for their their feedback um, on the experience of, of the IGB culture. So absolutely, it will be woven into how we do our seminars as well, but lots of opportunities to get involved and uh, we'll make sure those dates um, go out uh, for you, Martin. Okay, thanks very much. Um, I had a second query. Um, yes, on, also on the 30th of May, um, Many of us attended a ministerial visit from Elena Whittam, and I, I wondered if this is, I wondered if there's going to be a chance today to have, to have an update, or maybe just to touch base on what happened there. Um, I don't know if this is the right place, or maybe some other point in the agenda. Do you um, want to, uh, Sandra? Do you want to address that one? It, if, if if that's possible, I, mean, I, I I thought it was really helpful. It was there. Um, we were there. For, um, I believe the minister was touring local authorities to find out about the, the implementation of of MAT standards, but it went way beyond that. Um, it was, I thought, it was a really positive um, discussion. It went on. It it was a protracted, um, constructive exchange of ideas and information. Um, Simon Rayner was was really excellent in, I think, in leading the the discussion on on drugs and alcohol, and the minister seemed absolutely engaged. Uh, and I think that there was a real strength and that we demonstrated teamwork I mean, the room was packed with with all of our partners. So I think that that must have made a good impression. Um, so I don't know, is is there any update on that? It just seems to be an, an area where where we've got some where we've got some strength. Um, and I hope that we made a good, um, a good impression on the minister. 
thank you for summarised the visit yeah. well. <laughs> I think that was an excellent summary. I think um, so the follow up that we have, we're, we're looking to prepare a letter of thanks to go to the minister and we're working on that um, with our colleagues, with Gail, with Simon, and we'll, we'll, we'll obviously share that with the chair um, before we send that back. I think I would agree that the meeting did, it went well. We were all left with an impression of um, a minister who's very well informed of the subject that she's there, very well interested. There were various groups, I think, um, Sorry, Luan, I'm pulling you in again, but Luan was part of the Aberdeen recovery visit, I think, then and contributed there. So that appeared to go well. Um, and yeah, we haven't done much more than just really reflect on that at this moment in time. So I'm not sure if any other colleagues who are either on the call or around the room would contribute. But Councillor Greg, I'm, I think you did an excellent sum up there actually at the start. So thank you. <laughs> well, I, can, can I just come back to that? I mean, I learned a lot um, uh, and it was so reassuring um to 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 hear everybody contributing everybody was everybody was collaborating everybody was aligned and we've got a very strong a very clear direction towards restorative practice towards care um away from the enforcement side of things um so i, I think i think that we did um show that a more progressive approach um works up here I, I don't know how it works elsewhere, but maybe there was a learning opportunity there for the minister. So thank you. I'm aware that sorry, um, I'm aware there is visits. Um, I know my other two chief officer colleagues have said that they've got invitations as well. So if there's any feedback from their visits, but I've given them encouragement that we certainly found the visit to be positive from our perspective. So. Thanks. Um, I'm, I've seen Phil Mackey waiting very, very patiently for a few minutes. Is um, Luan, did did you want to comment on the the afternoon session with the minister, or, or have you got another hello, another issue? Yeah, happy to wait for Phil though. That's okay. okay. Yeah. In that case, over to Phil, and thanks for your patience, Phil. I'm I'm equally happy to wait because if it's if it's a follow-on on ministerial visit, mine is just to draw attention to two other items within Sandra's report. So I will defer to you, Luan, and pick up afterwards. Thanks, Phil. Yeah, just to say I attended the Aberdeen and recovery part of the visit in the afternoon, and I think what came across really strongly was the importance of hearing lived experience and putting people with lived and living experience at the centre of our plans, which is a very strong feature in Aberdeen. Um, and the theme that, that Martin also highlighted, the importance of partnership. So it wasn't just about partnership with services, but also partnership with people who are using services. Um, and I think the, yeah, there was a really good exchange with with the minister, who, yeah, as Sandra says, is very well well informed, and um, I think is um, is very passionate about how important this agenda is. So yeah, overall, really positive, and yeah, showing Aberdeen in a very positive light. And the only thing I would add to that is that um, we've mentioned the the work on culture, and I think at the meeting, um, I think it was Gail Beatty who made the very good point that actually. Um, uh, although we've got good structures and processes, what really makes stuff work well is the culture and it's the people, um, which I thought was a very well made point by Gail. So, Bill, over to you. Thanks very much. Um, just two items, really more comments than than questions for, for colleagues around the, the board. The first is to ensure that we all note the amount of work that's going on in relation to vaccine programmes, particularly with the summer booster programme for COVID. Um, against that background, the, the relocation of the vaccine uh, vaccination centre is an important component within that. But the fact we're already into 23-24 winter planning for both the COVID and the flu cycle for next year, already in place, already having to work through in advance of receiving CMO letter. I don't think we should underestimate how much work goes into those areas and simply presume that they happen. This is a year round effort, and I think we should um, not only note that, but perhaps thank the, the Vaccine Transformation Programme team and the rest of those people who are involved. Um, the second thing is just to say how welcome it is to see within the context of the, the comments about LOIP, and the programmes of work to which the Health and Social Care Partnership is, is contributing. Um, 
it, it's very easy to see these types of areas as being good improvement programs that don't go anywhere. I think the final commitment to recognising that where things are shown to have good benefit, that ensuring that we look at ways of scaling those programmes of improvement into citywide delivery is something that we do need to, to, to do and take on board. It's very easy to fall into the trap of saying, isn't that a nice report? Rather than saying, and this is what it's going to take. So very welcome to see that within the report. Thanks, Phil. That's a, a really good point made there, I think. Um, uh, and, and yeah, it is. Um, uh, there is an awful lot of hard work going on. So I'm wondering uh, in terms of the, the recommendation, um, as, as well as just noting the report, I wonder if we could amend the recommendation to thank staff for all the hard work. Um, uh, you, you've mentioned those involved in winter planning and, and vaccinations, but I think right across the board, um, folk are doing a power of work, which is uh, which needs to be recognised. I think that would be incredibly welcome by those involved. Sure, thank you. OK, we can, we can do that if folk are, folk are content. Um, any other comments, questions on the report? Uh, I think Christian. Uh, yes, thanks very much, uh, Chair. Uh, it was uh, more something you might, might want to, uh, to consider. Uh, I've seen on the report that uh, on page uh, 28, that we are participating uh, to uh, uh, a lot of events, and particularly is the partnership between the Togo Community Planning at the University and, and I would, uh, and, and the many very good suggestion which you can find on page 28. I just wonder if it could be possible in the future to put a link to this contribution, just for us to be able to uh, to see exactly uh, what it was in details and see the reaction as well of uh, people when they hear our suggestion. Thanks for that. Yeah, was that? Thanks. Uh, okay. Any more? Any more hands? I am not seeing any. OK, so can we note report and uh, just add in the thanks to staff for all the hard work um, uh, as we discussed. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that will bring us on to item 6.1, which is the uh, the paper, the governance arrangements for hosted mental health services. Uh, this is why I think that where Jim Brown is going to withdraw from the meeting. And uh, could I ask uh, Catherine Kinnear to introduce the paper for us, please? John, I don't think we've got um, Catherine here with us today, but I can give a, a brief summary of the report. Thanks for um, it, what, what, what the report seeks to do is just provide um, some information in terms of the, the, the governance arrangements, the management structure in place around mental health and, and, and learning disability and patient and specialist services, which of course is a, a hosted service um, on, on, on behalf of the other partnerships. The, the key point I think I would draw that there is a recognition that the arrangements in place um, have developed in a way that's become quite complex uh, and perhaps inhibiting um, the, the delivery of better outcomes in, in the most efficient manner. And so at 3.5, you'll see reference to the fact that we're um, currently starting a piece of work, um, not just within Aberdeen City, but with our colleagues across uh, the, the, the North East region to have a look at those structures, map them out, and then try and determine um, arrangements which um, will better enable the, the delivery of uh, better outcomes. We're going to take the um, piece of work through the um, uh, portfolio board uh, that we've got in place, so that, that will oversee the work 
um, that, that, that we undertake there. But we'll also be able to provide updates through the Risk Audit and Performance Committee uh, as part of our delivery plan, because this work will fall within um, one of the, the, the projects within our IGB uh, delivery plan. So it's, it's a report there for, for noting um, in, in terms of arrangements that are currently in place, but also just to bring your attention to the, the work that we've started and um, we'll look to progress over the coming weeks and months. Thanks for that, Fraser. So do we have any uh, comments or questions on the report? Uh, Thank you. Just really to say that I welcome this report, in particular, the, um, as Fraser has said, the, the review that's now going to um, happen to look at our arrangements. Um, and, and I suppose for me, it's good to see that's coming through RAPC as well. But we also need to be mindful of keeping our other um, partner organisations in the loop with that, particularly because we're hosting on behalf of um, Grampian. So what's the plan for um, involving the other two IJBs um, in this, this journey that we're about to go on? Thanks, uh, Luan. So the, the other two partnerships will be right around the, the, the table. So they will be part of the team um, that maps out what we've got in place um, and what, what we need to, to best meet the needs uh, in the future. Thanks for that, Fraser. And uh, Sandra, do you want to come in? Just to add for assurance that the three chief officers actually um, are looking at this as part of their our in-year objective so it will have a strong focus for us to to take that forward um, and the part of Fraser highlighted that this is going through the portfolio board ensures that all partners are engaged around that that's people with with lived experience as well as our wider colleagues and stakeholders so taking it through that board means that it's not just um it doesn't just have a lens, if you like, of a service delivery lens, but has a whole um, portfolio lens of all partners. Thanks for that, Sandra. So just checking for any more hands. Can't see any more hands. So can we note the report? Yeah, thank you for that. Um, and actually, could we now, uh, before we move on to the next item, could we get in touch with um, June Brown to say she can come back in? So if we wait just a couple of seconds for that to happen. I'll say just, just bear with us for a couple of seconds. We are trying to just uh, tell June that we've resumed. So as I said, just bear with us for just a couple of minutes more and then we'll um, uh, we'll crack on.
we are core eight, so I think um, while we're trying to get June back in, uh, we'll we'll crack on anyway. Um, the the next item on the agenda is seven point one, which is the strategic risk register. Who's introducing this one? <coughs> Myself. Oh. Yeah. Thanks. OK, thank you. Yes, Martin is on, on leave, so I'm um, introducing this on his behalf. Um, so the purpose of this report is to present the IGB with an updated version of the Strategic Risk Register. IGB last saw this in October last year, and since then, um, the Business and Resilience Manager has undertaken two quarterly reviews with the risk owners, and this latest version contains updates from them. Uh, there have been no new risks added and uh, none are recommended for de-escalation. Um, all risk levels remain the same. Um, there are some risk owners in attendance today to help um, respond to any questions. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Alison. Um, any questions on the paper from anyone? Christian. Yes, thanks very much, Chair. I, I will make the same point that I made before. It's, uh, it's the one on page 83, uh, with the seven. So it says on it, no change. Uh, but of course, no change uh, is because we are uh, at the highest of the highest, almost certain and extreme. So I just want to have some feedback on that. Maybe putting in a, And I know we have to put no change because no change compared to where we are, but uh, I would like to have some feedback and maybe in the future when something goes right and uh, if the situation is getting worse of where we are now. Thanks for that, Christian. Who wants to pick up that one? So apologies, we don't have Sandy here as the, the, the risk owner. Um, I don't know if there's any other colleagues who could perhaps help with the response. Teresa? Yeah, but I, th I think the point um, I'm hearing from Christian is just around providing a little bit more context. So if there's um, no change reflected, um, perhaps just looking at um, providing a bit of assurance or, or, or otherwise around what that means in practice from the, the, the previous uh, reporting period. Um, so we can easily take that on board. Thanks, I think that'd be helpful. Uh, Christine, did you want to come back in? Uh, I, I just wonder if, if it's possible to uh, to change the no change uh, risk movement when we are at the top level. Anyway, we could tweak all that if we feel that we are in a worse situation than we were the time before. That's all. Yeah, thanks to take yeah. that on board, John. Uh, Christian, thank you. Um, Sorry, Christian, do you have any, any more questions? questions? No, uh, in which case, uh, Luan. Thank you. And I think probably just building from what Christian was saying there, that there's there's such a lot of pressure just now and such a lot of change in our context and the challenges that poverty brings for our communities. And I wonder when we're going to have, um, or is there a plan for us to have a seminar where we can all kind of have a bit of a deeper dive into the context and the risks and how that's impacting on, on health in our communities. Um, I think it's probably a year or so since we, we had a seminar. So just just an ask that we we look to add that to our already um, detailed seminar programme. But I think it's a really important area that we take a look at. Yeah, the last um, semin risk seminar was August last year. Um, so we have got it listed on the list of seminars. Um, I'll speak to Martin when he comes back um, tomorrow and uh, we'll get a date scheduled in. Thank you, that would be good. I think there's a, I think I'm seeing another hand, but I can't see who it is. Oh, Martin, sorry, thanks. <laughs> I mean, to the outsider, it just looks unsustainable. Um, this it looks like an exceptional 
um, situation, and you wonder, you know, what are what are what are the solutions um, that we can find? Um, uh, and for example, um, there's mention in there of the pressures at at winter winter time. So who knows what what winter 23 24 could bring with with adding additional challenges on 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 the workforce. And of course, there's also mention of staff illness. So, I mean, that that adds in into the risk. So yeah, I like the idea of some further examination. Maybe is it possible to get some comparative understanding of how we are with elsewhere? Or I mean, are we alone in this in this very extreme situation? Can we learn anything from others? I'm, I'm just you know just trying to get a little bit more context because it does seem does does seem um, highly challenging. I was going to use the word hopeless, but it's never hopeless. Morning. Who wants to pick that one up? Sandra? They come back on that. Yep. Um, I, I think it is a fair point. Um, Council, it's it is significant risk that we're that we're working within, and um, very high risks. We we aren't alone. I think that um, any conversations we have with colleagues or at a national level would reflect similar risks across a multitude of um, IGBs. But we can certainly look at other risk registers and do a comparator about whether we're um, scoring ourselves higher or lower on that. The other key part I would suggest is that um, it's difficult. Um, th there's a balance between us highlighting the um, the consequences of those risks. And the mitigations that we've got, and many of them are not fast, you know, they're not quick wins. They're things that will take us over either the life of our strategic plan or will take us um, over generational changes from our population. So it does feel um, quite uncomfortable to work within this environment of level of risk, but um, one that I would uh, suggest, unfortunately, is within health and social care arena, is one that we find ourselves. Um, working in on a, a daily basis so but I, that, as you said a key point so we can certainly understand we, we can bring it to the risk when we have the strategic review at the seminar we can bring it there we will also um have a, a just a look across other igbs we can certainly ask that i think we're, we're engaged enough at national level to understand there um and we will as council allard said look to see if there's some way we can give some slight more um, assurance on the risk movement so that people don't feel that we're just living in an untenable situation. Yeah, thank you. I mean, obviously, I don't want to add people's words, uh, which are all which are already stretched, but maybe there are maybe there are opportunities to compare with what others are doing. It's I, I think it will be a good opportunity for self for some mm -hmm. self reflection. Yep. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, um, we had a chance to self reflect when the minister came and it was there was a wonderful um, there was a wonderful sense of team spirit. So kind of looks gloomy in the risk register, but um, on the ground there, although there are there are challenges, there's also some positives. People, the people are keen to do a very powerful pro professional job. Um, so yeah, so some more context would be. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for that. I saw uh, June, June Brown hand up next. Thank you, John. So, Jim Brown, Executive Nurse Director, I don't know if I introduced myself previously, so apologies if I didn't when I spoke. Um, thank you, Alison, for the paper. I suppose my question is probably a bit similar to Luanne's and, and, and a bit of what Christian was saying, um, was saying there in relation to, so we've got mitigating actions in place to try and reduce those risks. As I suppose my question is, are they working? And if they're not working, what else are we doing around those? If none of, these, none of this risk has moved, uh, and, and maybe it is an opportunity, as Luan suggested, that we have a bit of a, a risk seminar to understand the depth of, of those and the complexity of those risks, because I think that'd be really helpful. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, um, we uh, will have the, the the seminar as we as we said. Um, but what uh, Martin does is uh, at his quarterly reviews as he sits down with each of the risk owners and goes through all of the mitigating actions, and we have that discussion around about are they working? Is there something else that we need to do? Um, and you know, if you tracked back the changes to that those particular sections in terms of mitigating actions and and current updates, etc., you would see that information change. Um, but unfortunately.
unfortunately, it, 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 you know, for some of them, it hasn't managed to to, to bring the, the the risk down. But we can certainly look at that more in depth um, when we get to the the seminar. Thank you, Alison. Um, I'll see Christian's hand and uh, Stuart's hand. So bringing Christian first. Uh, thanks very much for, for all the suggestion. I think they are, they, they are very helpful. And like Martin said, on the visit of the minister, uh, we had to explain why we were in a different position than others. And I think it's, it's important maybe to work a little bit on this and see if we could have uh, something prepared where we can explain easily from uh, the same hidden um, sheet yes, of no, no, why Aberdeen I'm is struggling. And we've seen it on page 84. It does say a managing very high level vacancies in comparison in to neighboring health ports. So there is, uh, if we could try to get that uh, uh, a little be uh, uh, a context a little bit better and making sure that we we all say the same thing, particularly when we uh, go and give uh, our views uh, down in Edinburgh. I think it's important that we we have that uh, uh, already for all of us to uh, to uh, to claim that which is right, which is in a different place than other uh, neighboring health groups. <laughs> Thanks, Christian. Did you want to? No. OK, uh, Stuart. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, everyone. Stuart Lambert and Transformation Programme Manager for Strategy and Infrastructure as part of Alison McLeod's team. I sit on the delivery group for um, the workforce plan and was responsible for helping create and develop it moving forward. I just wanted to provide some reassurance to the IJB, if I could, Chair, that that um, group is working very hard at the moment and when the when the workforce plan was approved um, at the back end of last year and the delivery group came into place at the start of this year that plan obviously set out to directly mitigate some of the um, risks identified for workforce. We've obviously agreed that <clears throat> the annual update is due in November going up to the risk audit and performance committee so after seeing this risk in October the workforce plan was then subsequently approved. So we're working on updates at the moment as well. I appreciate November may, may seem like uh, quite far away, but it's actually going to come around very quickly. So just to provide some reassurance that how we're measuring progress and what we're doing in terms of those three tranches of recruitment and retention, mental health and well-being, and digital and growth, we will be providing um, the annual updates in November. But if anything else is required for the seminar too, we can certainly put in uh, information there as well. So it's just to provide some reassurance that these are being worked on, but maybe to touch on Sandra's point that it's a, it is a three year workforce plan and it will take some some time for us to to get things get things going. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that reassurance, Stuart. Um, now I want, can't see any of the hands. Um, nope, can't see any more hands with questions or comments. Um, uh, in in which case, can we approve the um, risk register subject to having a look at um, uh, maybe putting some different words around those risks which are maybe getting a wee bit worse. So are we happy to do that? Thank you very much. And that, I believe, brings us to the almost the end of the meeting. Um, uh, when we were doing the uh, chief officer report, I forgot to mention um, make mention of uh, Jason Nickel, who's in the section on staffing changes. Jason's got a new role and um, so it's been talk we've been talking about the importance of culture. Jason's made a huge um, uh, impact and contribution on that. So I'd just like to wish Jason uh, well in his new role. Um, uh, next meeting is on 22nd of August. So look forward to seeing you all uh, there. 
um, uh, and uh, look forward to seeing some of you for this afternoon's seminar. Um, uh, thanks to colleagues uh, for your contributions this morning. Uh, and again, apologies that um, not all the technology went perfectly well, but um, hopefully next time we'll get it sorted. Uh, Luan, did you want to say something? Yeah, j just wondering about timings for our seminar this afternoon. I don't know if it's possible to start it um, like at one rather than one thirty, given we're we're finished early, or is that going to cause problems for um, colleagues that are just joining for that? Alison, sorry, <laughs> it's fine if it needs to stay at twelve thirty. Uh, one thirty. We will do our best to bring it forward. Um, I've got uh, a fair number of folks joining me um, okay. to give various presentations. Um, some of them are already in Aberdeen, I know, but one at least is on our way in from Huntley. So, so I'm not, not quite, quite sure we, where, where she is on, on that journey. journey. Uh, but we will, if we can bring it forward, um, we will. I, I will uh, just, just contact folks just now and uh, let, let you know we'll get a message out to everybody. everybody. OK, thank you. OK, thanks for that. So um, I think it's a case of wa watch this space in case we can bring it forward, but um, otherwise it's 1.30. Um, and um, uh, yeah, so thanks, everybody. Uh, see you and on. Uh, Kim, all the best for the future. And um, yep, see some of you later. Thanks a lot. Thanks. thanks. Thank you.